welcome back. If you were with us uh, earlier on for the main programme, you'll hardly be surprised to hear that we've been overwhelmed with calls tonight. We've 40 phone lines here at Crime Watch UK. They've been taking calls at police in incident rooms up and down the country. But plainly, people have still been finding it difficult to get through. So. But people who have got through, I think there are nearly a thousand of them so far, have already given police some new leads. So let's start with Photocall, which has had some particularly good information. Here's David Hatcher. First of all, the jewellery robbers, two of them in Kensington in London. Yes, we've had many names suggested for these two, Sue. So, uh, most names suggesting that they're London-based and the Peckham area has been mentioned. So we're optimistic there. Right. Patrick McPartland next. He might have some information on a murder in Brighton. Yes, uh, an attempt murder. We've got 30 calls there, including two very interesting calls from one particular part of the country that, again, leave us with a lot of hope. Right. Then there was the man who cashed a forged banker's draft for £16,000 in Thomas Cook's in the Strand. Yeah, it's not a great number of calls, but all the calls have produced names, seven of them in fact, and uh, one of them is a very good quality source. Right. Then there was a building society robber in East London. Yes, this man here with a leather jacket committing the robbery. Quite a few names suggested, including PCs who's, who think they've arrested him, him. And we've got two officers from different areas who've called with the same name. Right. And uh, the same building society, a different branch, was robbed by two other robbers in, in London. Yes, we've had 14 calls there, information to be followed up, and uh, a request to see that picture again. Very good pictures. Let's hope somebody else calls us now and confirms what we already know. OK. And Mandy Beavers, a very distinctive description of her. Yes, sightings very much around the country, Oxford and Rotherham, and even a viewer in Amsterdam has called and said that she's seen uh, Mandy Beavers. If you think you know where she is, still call. Actually, we think we're very close. Right. And finally, Somerset Police are looking for a man in connection with a stolen cheque worth nearly £20,000. Yes, the man using the name Ibikunli Temitopi Ogumbanjo. Well, we've had 27 calls most revealing information that connect up with things we already know. A lot of calls from police officers, the detective chief inspector rang to say one of his DSs is dealing with the men in Tooting. A number of calls saying the man recently appeared in court somewhere. So, again, that one might be cleared up. Right, so all those look quite promising, in fact. Yes. David, thank you. Nick. On August Bank holiday, shortly after midnight on the Friday night, a man called at a house at Hessel, near Hull on Humberside, knocked at the door, and then stabbed the householder to death. Police asked if we could help trace anyone who knew the victim. Keith Slater was a, a driving instructor. And there are pupils, friends, and especially two women who have been seen with him who police uh, haven't yet traced, and uh, those two women haven't yet come forward. At least they hadn't until our appeal. Harry Lilly, what's, what's happened tonight? Well, the situation is, is that within 12 seconds of the telephone number going on the air, uh, our incident room was inundated with phone calls. We've had over 60 phone calls. We have not had a phone call from a woman who says that she is the person concerned. We have indeed had several suggestions as to identity of these people. What I would say is that it is imperative that these women do come forward. It would be much better for them to come to us rather than us go and knock on their door and find them that way. In case there is a woman watching this update who didn't watch the original programme, you're looking for someone who knew Keith Slater and was seen with him in the National Pub. Absolutely, yes, that's correct. Uh, we're looking for a woman who was with him. What I would say is there is no reason to suspect that that woman has committed any offence at all. She herself is in, not in any trouble, but I would urge that she comes to the police as soon as possible. OK, now what about the man? You showed for the first time uh, an artist's impression that's of correct. the killer. I know many people wanted to see that Again, tell us about the man you're looking for. Well, this is a man who has a local accent. He's about five foot six to five foot eight, stocky build. Uh, he, his hair, in fact, was described as being like a brush. Um, he is the assailant, and the artist impression was, of course, uh, put together as a result of Carol, what Carol Slater remembers seeing as she came dashing down the stairs. So her husband being killed, hence the rather staring eyes. That's correct, yes. OK, well, let's hope you get more calls and they work out. Thank, Thank you, Miss Lily. Sue. Well, there's been a series of cases across the north of England in which a con man, described as a Jeff Capes look-alike, has been stealing cash and valuables from elderly people's homes. We reconstructed some examples, both to warn people and to prompt people to identify the man. Hello. Hello. I'm doing a bit of work next door, so if you hear any banging, it's only me. All right? Yes. Hello, I'm from the electricity board. I've come to check your immersion heater. Oh, come on in. Hello, love. Hello. I'm from the water board. We're working in the area. Did you get the letter? 
Well, this is the kind of crime that happens far too often, it seems. Detective Chief Inspector Mick Turner is working trying to catch this particular con man. You've had a lot of calls. We have. It's been more than encouraging. We've had over 50 calls to the studio and over 100 to the incident room in Leeds. Now, one man, as we mentioned in the main programme, phoned to say he'd seen a man who looked startlingly like this man in a library in Preston. Yes, this man called back again. I spoke to him. I was very interested in what he had to say. Uh, he's absolutely certain that he's seen this man on more than one occasion in the library. Uh, and uh, whilst he doesn't want to divulge his identity, he has promised to contact me again. So maybe he's been, this man has been seen in other libraries too? It could well be, and if anybody does see him there, I'd ask him to contact us. Could we have a description of the man? We had a special technique using a computer called an e-fit, so if we could just describe him again. Yes, the man is in his uh, mid-forties. He's always described as being fairly well built. He has a full beard and moustache, and invariably wears a boiler suit, either blue or a green one. How important is it you catch this man? It's extremely important. He's already called, caused untold distress, and before he causes any more, we'd like to trace and arrest this man. And if we could just appeal finally to old people not to keep cash in their homes. Yes, please. Um, no large amounts of cash, and to the visitors and friends, please be on the alert. Right, and genuine callers won't mind at all if you tell them that you'll call back, you'll call their head office, and they can come back later when there's a friend who can be with them. Certainly, we'll do everything possible. Right, thank you very much indeed. Incidentally, we've had one or two quite interesting calls on one of the cases that we covered last month on the murder of Suzanne Greenhill, and uh, we'll bring you up to date with that next month, if anything results from that. But now to instant desk. Uh, David Hatcher, what sort of calls did you get tonight? Well, first of all, we dealt with the Penge rape, and uh, we showed you this artist's impression of a man believed to be responsible for that rape. Well, we've had a name and address for him suggested. If you still think you know who he might be, still call us. We also showed you this jumper, that was left behind by the rapist. We thought it was probably a manufactured one, and several callers have rung in to say, yes, they think it's manufactured. They know people who've got jumpers like this. What we want is names and addresses of people who own jumpers like this, especially if you think anyone's lost one. Still call us. That could solve this very s savage case. Now the murder in uh, Bournemouth of uh, Graham Williamson. Yes, this belt was featured and uh, used in, in the murder. We asked for people to identify where it may have come from or who may have owned it. Well, we had 56 calls about the origin of, or possible origin of the belt. There are suggestions, for example, that it might have been in May's prison where such belts are made. We featured the uh, Celtic embossing on here and this imitation stitching and also this word Honda and uh, the belt buckle. Well, do you know anybody who's owned a belt like that and lost it? If so, please call us, a very dangerous man. What about the gateway robbery uh, at uh, Bamborough in Cheshire? Well, over 20 calls there, and we showed you a video of uh, a cavalier being used, we thought, to steal the cortina that was actually used in the robbery. Well, people called in and said they think they know who the cavalier belongs to, and they've suggested names to us of who the offenders might be. And uh, we showed you also the artist's impression of uh, one of the people believed in that uh, cortina. Well, names have been suggested for him too. But again, if you know who he is, call us. I know on that and a number of the other incidents we've been talking about tonight. Uh, police are out right now making inquiries as a result of the calls too. Well, finally tonight, the murder of a Muslim religious teacher in Whitechapel in East London. It was Tuesday the 26th of April during the Muslim month of Ramadan. Abdur was last seen shortly before midnight standing outside the Silet Cash and Carry in Fordham Street. Police believe he was killed very soon after that, and his body was driven 12 miles away along the A11 and then Epping New Road. It was found dumped on the edge of the Epping Forest. And uh, Jeff Parrott is in charge of this case. What sort of response have you had on this one? The response has been tremendous, Sue. I have two callers who remained anonymous have in fact suggested a name of the person responsible for killing Abdul Rashid. It's quite obvious to me that these two people have far more information to impart, and I would urge them to ring us back. Abdul's body was dumped somewhere around the area um, Fairmead Road and High Beach in Epping Forest. You were hoping that courting couples in a car park nearby might have seen something. Yes, no courting couples have come forward and volunteered information, but we have had two calls which suggest that the body was dumped there at about 1.30am on the 27th of April. Right. And, um, of course, just to stress that um, information is in confidence. If anybody will come forward, it is in confidence. Finally, have you had any leads on the bedspread? We've had many calls on the bedspreads. Several calls look extremely interesting. Um, two suggest that deliveries were made into Whitechapel of bedspreads of a similar nature, similar type. Right, so... And we shall be following those up. Great. Mr Parrott, thank you.
Mr Barrett, uh, asked for people to ring in, those two in particular, he thought had more information. The lines here to the studio are closing just about any minute now, but we'll give you local numbers in a moment. And they're all on CFAX on page 186. You can write to us, of course, at Crime Watch UK, BBC TV, London W12 8QT. And, of course, you can always call your local police. Now join us again next month when we hope there'll be a good deal more progress to report. Whatever happens, don't have nightmares, do please. Sleep well. Good night. Good night.